Now we have to decide where we're going to get our art from. This is kind of a problem mainly because most art that we find printed out is going to be under copyright. Because of that we cannot use it for our zines. We could use it if you wanted to use it here and there um, for personal stuff that's completely fine but as soon as this goes out or if you sell this or if this goes in a show can't use that anymore. So I want to talk about some of the ways that we can get art from some of the simple ways to some of the more complex ways. One of the easiest things to do is to go to the library or go to the thrift store. Most of the books that I have are just old thrift store books. This is actually a collection of photography from National Geographic. One nice thing is that everything enters the public domain after a certain amount of time. Right now I think we're at 1926. So we can go through here and look and see that this was shot in 1910. So that means that we could take a scan of this image. National Geographic might, might be sad about it, but 1910, that means we're okay. This is 1927, the, ne the next one. I don't think that we are there for that one. So this was one of those things where I could take this and I could either take a picture of the picture that they have, or I could just scan and get a photocopy of it. The nice thing about a photocopy is then I can cut out the image and it makes it easier to work with. Same with some of these, this picture down here in the corner uh, is 1906, so we know that that one is okay to use. So be careful and keep an eye out uh, as to what that date is, but going to the library you can get some of these old things and they do generally have a photocopier there for you to use. Even older books, this is a uh, this is from, when are you from? You are from, this is copyright 1890 and then copyright 1900. So we know that the original is 1890, that puts us way before, co way before copyright. So we have this really neat art that we could use for whatever our zine's about. We have this really interesting text we could go through this. This unfortunately is pretty much just a, a, a thing of tables, so it's not really super useful for our, pur for our purposes. But it is a source of good images, especially if you can get old books of drawings and things like that from this era. They can be a very, very good source of art for a project like this. Another opportunity for public domain is government texts. Anything made by the government, specifically, uh, is going to be in the public domain for the most part. Uh, there are rare cases where it's not, but um, for the most part, you know, it's going to be. So the nice thing is, like this, other than there's a sticker on it and it ruined the cover, this is a really cool little piece of art. This is a, a Navy training manual on basic electricity. Again, a thrift store find cool little atom art that we could steal out of this if we wanted to. But the neat thing about this is they have like technical drawings. Right? Like the drawing of this battery. It's not might not be interesting to, to you if you're not into the sciences, but this is like a really cool just basic drawing of how this works. This is completely stealable essentially because it's out of copyright. Also this art, this chapter two, I absolutely love this. This is so fantastic mid-century uh, with the two and that. So that might be something that if I want chapter numbers, well I could just steal them out of this book because this book has like 20 chapters so I would have enough to do whatever I'm working on. Of course, in a zine, you don't really have chapters. Go to my next bookmark. Wire ties. You don't need to, this isn't relevant. Just if you are going to tie two wires together, do it like this. This, just a really cool little piece of art. And this is something that I was thinking about if you were going to do a zine about like conspiracy stuff or like ghosts. You could take a complex technical drawing like this one and then scan it, right? You don't don't write in the book. Scan scan it, make a copy, then just take a permanent marker and mark out all of these like they're redacted, and you get some really interesting art out of that. Same with this. What just like a cool little piece of what looks like science fiction y art. 
and just available for use right out of this book. Also, one thing with older books, sometimes older books will have texture. So you can think about what that texture might be used for. One thing I would suggest against is do not use the texture out of clothing or the patterning out of cloth because all of that is copywritten. There are options like this that are simply just sources of art. This is just a collection of geometric patterns. Might be a good option. Remember, it has to specifically call out that it's older than that date or that you're allowed to use it. You can buy some of these books where you are allowed to use that art. Another option, this is a book and it's going to have photo so these photographs. The weird thing is that this book is a copyright of the museum that made it. But these photographs are not. These photographs are, ori are, are originals. So you can use those photographs. Like these are modern photographs. I couldn't use any of those. But the old drawings, I could use those. An old photograph, I could use that. I'd want to make sure that that is not uh, like 1950s. I'd want to make sure that that is from the time. Because again, any of the government stuff, you can use. So that's, that makes it a little bit easier. This drawing down here, I'd have to be careful because I don't know if that drawing is modern, if it was done for this book, or if it's an original drawing. If it's an original drawing, like these that are all in German, these are originals, you could totally use that, but this one I'd want to be a little bit more careful about. So there are options in books that are very good options. Another option is just to go online. You can go online and search public domain stuff. The problem with that is you're kind of going to kind of get what everybody else has because everybody's going to search for XYZ topic, public domain, and everybody's going to pull from that same art. So I would suggest avoiding that. Again, I'm doing my little book on tanks. I found this really cool piece of cartoon art. So I think I'm going to cut out this little guy right here and use that. I found this old propaganda poster. I'm probably going to use this cut out as the corner of something and remember is that once we have this art we can print it out at all sorts of different scales so once we have our plan which we've already made we've already made our plan we know how big this is going to be so i can see that this piece of art is too big for our page right you can even see the the art around the edges so we're probably not going to get to use this in its current state i can see however that this might work at the size i printed it i actually did did scale this slightly so this would be about the right size. I knew I wanted to use this for my design. So we have options of printing things. If we wanted to modify the quality of these, one thing that's an interesting with using a physical copier is by copying it and then taking that printout and then copying it again and taking that printout and copying it again, you can actually get a degradation in quality. And a degradation in quality doesn't sound like a good thing, but the one nice thing about a degradation in quality is it can bring all of your art together to be very similar. So that's a really nice thing that, that you can do to get your art to look similar, right? Because these two art styles do not look the same. This is very gray, this is very black and white. And so I would probably send this through the copier with a contrast filter on it, or by bumping the, con by bumping the contrast to get this to look a little bit closer to this. Of course, they're two different styles of art, but we can at least get closer. We can also use things like natural made patterns. This is just a piece of paper that I just crumpled up and then flattened out. And then I fed it through this copier. So here's two copies of this. This one on this side with just this really faint image is with the top closed down. You can see that the, the around the edge is white. This one is with the top open. And you can see the difference. I have these really nice darker areas like right this has much more of an undulation feel to it this is a very flat texture which might be nice if i have like text over the top of it and i don't want it to to really be too aggressive this is really nice uh if i wanted something more aggressive this is a better version for that something that could also be interesting this is the just the bottom industrial objects are okay 
for example, if I use the edge of this and it says the Croy, I can't use that because that's a copywritten object. That, that's a trademark. But the bottom of it is an industrial object. It's not a creative object. We don't have to worry about copyright. And what's happened here is I've just spray painted a bunch of stuff while it was sitting on top of here. So it has all this weird texture, but it also has the little like punch lines for where the can sat in it. So I might be able to get an interesting texture scan out of this. Again, be very cautious in not using other people's designs. So like the bottom of a shoe or the pattern on a shirt, do not use those. So this is how we get art. You can also just draw your own art. It's totally fine to just draw a little cartoon and then you can scan it. One nice thing about doing the scan and copy is you can copy a bunch of them. So you can have many different versions of that thing or you know one for each corner, however you want to do it. Now let's talk about getting the text for our zine. We're going to use Google Docs to get our text. It's what everybody has, and again, we're making a zine. It's not supposed to be fancy. It's supposed to be available to everyone. Now, I've the nice thing is I've already planned. I know exactly how wide my columns need to be. I know exactly how big my text needs to be, right? My column width is 1.25 inches. My type size is going to be eight points for my body copy. So I'm gonna copy some te text in here, but you can see that we now have one big six and a half inch wide column. That's not gonna work, right? Because our page isn't even six and a half inches wide. We could go in and actually change our page size and make it half a page. But I wanna show you the other way of doing this. The other way, three here, you can see that we have an inch and three quarters here. So what we want to go up is not get the right indent, but get it where it says column. Oh, you guys can't see the tooltip there. And bring this over to 1.25. That gives us 1.25 here, another one here, another one here. This wastes some paper. Oh yeah, it definitely does. But we're going to do our best. Now I'm going to copy some text into this. This is a page. Again, these are uh, rules for a tabletop game. And I'm going to copy and paste these in. Oh, we have a lot of text. And I can see that when I was writing this, it looks like I was using 10 point type. So let's go ahead and reset this. I'm just going to do this standard. I'm not going to bother with text styles. All right, that text looks pretty good to me now. I like the way it looks. I like the way it looks in the columns. I can see that I have a few things that I don't like. For example, I do not like that these have single words at the end. It's a little bit irritating. So I might want to say, eh, I don't really want to make this go down like that. You also have the option when you're doing something like this that this is an important section compared to the rest of this. So maybe we switch it up. Maybe we do it like this. We actually bring this text down. Yeah, that looks totally fine. Following list looks like a list. We're good with that. Now I have a problem where this, the top of this paragraph and the bottom of this paragraph are separate. I like that. So I can either just enter it down. You can insert a column break, and the column break will take you just to the next column and not the next page. So now the nice thing is this text is like one chunk of text. So we don't need to worry as much about it. If this was two, then we have to like manually by hand cut them back together, and that's just no fun at all. All right, all of this looks pretty good. And you can see that these columns are getting a little bit thin for an eight point font. We are starting to get some pretty raggedy writes, but that's okay. And remember, we also do have the option of we could do this as a two column. So if we wanted to do any of this as two column, we could do that as well. So we could switch this and go to our columns. 
we could go to two column. This column is exactly three inches across, and from our little pile of measurements, we know that a two column is two and three quarters. So we can take this and go to there. So now we have one, two, and three quarters. And let's see, do we have two and three quarters over here as well? Yes, we do. So it's two and three quarters. So now we can see that this is what it would look like if we did it as two of the three columns. Now that looks okay. It's not great. Hmm. I'm trying to decide which one of these I actually like better. And now we can re we could remove our column break now, so we can, you know, not waste a bunch of paper. And then we need to add a column break here because we want this list to all be one big box of text. I think that's okay. I think we do waste a little bit of space. So let me undo those things. And now we can see, does this... So we know... Let me zoom out a little. We know that all of this I kind of want in one column, and because this is a different heading, right? So I, I know that this all wants to be in one column, and I know that this probably wants to be in one column. So we can actually check over here. This starts at zero at the top here, and we are one, two, three, four, five inches. We can tell we're less than five inches. And we know that we have a vertical section of the eight and a half minus so three quarters at the bottom minus the half inch at the top, giving us seven and a quarter. So we're fine. We can actually fit this completely okay. It looks like this next thing, we can also fit that just fine. And then this one starts at two and goes to not nine. So we know that we're okay for that. So these will each fit in their own columns. So this starts at 2 and goes to 9, that'll fit in a column. This action order one will fit in a column, and this one will fit in a column. If I don't want to cut the individual, like I would be fine with cutting these individually and repasting them because it might end up looking cool, but if I didn't want to do that, all I need to do to fix that is again, right click, insert a column break, and that gives me the column break I need. Oh, except I have a column break here now. Get rid of that column break. So now each, let's add a column break back here. So now each one of these is one thing that I could cut out and just paste up exactly as I wanted. Is this wasteful? Oh yes it is, right? We're wasting all this paper, we're gonna print this out and then scan it back in and it's gonna be, cra it's gonna be crazy. But it looks pretty cool, so yeah. I could also see if I wanted to try it in a different font before we continue. Droid Sans is fine, but it's relatively uninteresting. <laughs> Actually, really kind of like that, that E.B. Garamond. It's very stylish. It looks like it's allowed a few of my lines to get a little tighter. I do not like things like this, where this 3 is by itself, but again, without tracking, you're not really going to be able to fix much of that. This is E.B. Garamond Medium, so I think I am going to use that for this project. So I'm actually going to write that down on my list of measurements. In the same place that I have all my column measurements and everything right like that, just go ahead and write E.B. Garamond medium because then later on when I'm trying to figure out what I did because remember we're going to print this out and actually tape it up for real so it's not going to have any of the information about what font that is so I'm going to write down what font it is looks good to me so now I can take this and I can just print it now I want to do a headline I want to do um, the front page text so I'm going to get rid of all this, go 
go back to a more normal format. And now I know that the width of my document, right, because I wrote it down, the width of the whole page is 5.5 inches. The width of my content area, however, is four and a half. Oops, let's grab the correct thing, is four and a half inches. So I know that my text can be that wide before it's going to be problematic. Now, if I wanted to, I could go find the words that I'm looking for on online, and I could print them out, or I could draw by hand, or how, however. But I just want to see what this looks like before I go bothering with all that difficulty. So remember, I'm calling this project BYO Tank. So I'm going to use that. And let's see, let's go ahead and make this big. Remember, we can go all the way to here before we're going to have issues. So one, I don't think that this font works. A font like this is interesting, but I think it sets the tone too specifically. And with this word, I do have two different things going on. So I could, in theory, do this differently. Like that. We could split this up, and I could even split this up like this, cut them out separately and paste them back together so you get that kind of feeling and flair of that pasted attitude that zines often have. So I actually really don't like any of these font options and I'm not going to go look for others because I don't feel like it. fills our content size, we can see that. And when you're doing big type like this, you also have the option of graying it out. You could, instead of it being completely black, go with a lighter thing like that. You could also do inverted, like this. And then because I don't just want to print out this one piece of paper, just have this one word. Right, I want to be able to put the rest of the content in there that I'm going to have on that page. So I know that I'm going to want my name on there. And then let me look through my original text document. That's one thing is you kind of need to have your text already put together before you even start this. This is just making it pretty and putting it together. Now for my name, I'm going to go back to our font, which again, because I wrote it down, right, it's not in our recents because we were poking all those other fonts, is E.B. Garamond. And I think I'm going to go with a bold, and I think I'm going to take the bold off of this. And then we're going to need to figure that BYO section, we're going to need to decide what we want to do there. This funny little cat image. Again, I don't want it that big. I think this is going to be one of those things I want to like put maybe the corner of the image. So I'm going to go ahead and scale this down. That's a nice thing. I can just do that. I can make myself a bunch of these so if I need them, I'll have them. So that's going to give me two different sizes of that image. And now I'm simply going to print this. So we're done with this document, now we can go back to the table and put this together. Now I have printed out body copy text. I have my printed out what will hopefully make up some of my cover. And that will be combined with some of this art. So hopefully these two things will go together very nicely. I have my little black cats that I think I'm going to use throughout the book, just because it's such a bizarre little symbol more art and then I have textures and the textures that we scanned earlier so I might end up using those I might not it's entirely up to what looks good in the moment so in the next video we will go through putting together both the cover page and then one interior page